It's been nearly two decades since Cars hit the screens, and the animated movie characters has mesmerized kids all over the world. But when you watch the Cars movies as a kid, you don't really notice some weird and even disturbing things. I'm done. Look, I'm finished. Just say thank you and I'll be on my way. So in this video, we've decided to show you all the scenes and details from the Cars movies that were not made for kids. Make sure you stay till the end of this video not to miss out on anything. Let's get it started. The very first thing we need to talk about is actually dirty jokes that are hidden all over the movies. Of course, there are a lot of suggestive ones that sail right over the heads of its five-year-old fans, but let's focus on adult humor. One of the best examples of it is hidden in Lightning McQueen's Groupies. At the very beginning of the movie, when Lightning's races over, two red cars named Mia and Tia reveal that they are the biggest fans and they literally flash him from their headlights. I'm Mia. I'm Tia. We're, We're like, like your biggest, biggest fans. There was also another moment when Lightning barges in on Doc Hudson in the garage because Sheriff told him to examine his undercarriage. Then Lightning tells Mater that Doc turned out to be a once three-time winner of the Illustrious Racing Championship, the Piston Cup, and Mater ridiculously asks him, he did what in his cup? Right, you hear pissed on cup. We know that racing is actually a very dangerous sport, and the movie itself is mostly focused on racing. However, unlike humans, humans do in the real world, in the movie, cars aren't driving automobiles. They're essentially around a track using their actual bodies, which means that every time cars bump into each other, they hurt each other. They jockey for positions at high speed, leaving each other in dust or slammed against the wall, which is not super nice. This would be like if Carl Lewis or Usain Bolt knocked each other out of the way as they ran. Also, in the real world, if the cars are crushing during the races, drivers rarely get hurt, because the cars are packed with protective equipment. The vehicles take a lot of damage, but fans don't think too much about it because those cars don't feel pain. In the movie, we can see that cars do traumatize each other, and we guess that even the most minor racing incident is more or less a horrific injury. So we guess it's not really cool for kids to see all that cruelty. Who doesn't know the Pixar Planet Pizza Truck? It's one of the most well-known Easter eggs, and of course, it appears in cars. The thing is, in Cars, the PP is a bit different. Even though it appears for just a quick flash as part of a crowd scene before one of Lightning McQueen's big races, it is shown as a living creature with eyeballs and a mouth. But wait a minute, if there is a pizza delivery truck in Cars, does it mean that in this universe, Cars enjoy eating pizza? Any ideas? If yes, share it with us in the comment section. You don't need to be an adult to notice that everything about the human world had to be translated into its car equivalent. For example, when Flo serves gas and oil, we should perceive it as food in our world. However, not everything is a direct corollary, making some very strange moments that were not made for kids. Do you have any ideas what we're talking about? If not, don't worry. So the moment when Lightning McQueen travels from race to race is a bit odd. We mean how he does it is rather strange. To get him transported, McQueen was hauled around in the back of his specialty built truck. In the movie, we can see that this truck is something between a private jet and a limousine comfortable enough for lightning for transportation. But because this is the world of sentient cars, the truck is a living thing, which means, right, lightning travels literally inside of him. A bit odd and we hope kids don't get it. When kids watch cars, they probably don't really think much about the fact that the vehicles live in a world that is similar to humans' world, but there is no single human alive over there. So the question is, how and why is the world of cars this way? The place is 100% identical to our 21st century, and it is all built on our human culture. The cars even enjoy things that we enjoy, like celebrities and pop culture. For example, Radiator Springs is situated on the disused Route 66. Fillmore is mentioned to have lived through the 60s. Comedian and talk show host Jay Limo makes an appearance. They even speak English. Well, except for Guida, who speaks Italian. So is it just an alternate dimension where people don't exist, or maybe something had happened like the apocalypse and now the world in cars is post-apocalyptic and all people died years or centuries ago? All these scenarios are really scary and it feels like it could just be easily the plot of a horror movie rather than a film for children. We have one question here. How did the cars of cars come into existence? Are a mommy car and a daddy car getting together and a few months later a brand new car is born? Well, this logic can be the thing because according to the fact, everything in the cars universe is made like in our real world. We can assume 
that our theory's not that dumb. We know kids don't really think about it, but we decided to go further because we're adults, right? We also have McQueen and Sally who flirt all the time and they are definitely in love. We also have Mater and Holly Shiftwell who became an item in Cars 2. Or Ramon and Flo of Radiator Springs who are married as well. Oh yeah, baby! <laughs> we can only assume that some of these cars are bumping bumpers on the regular. We know this topic is interesting and many theories can be discussed, but let's just accept the biological imperative. Bees do it, dogs do it, even educated Chevys do it. Another thing that young viewers won't notice is the adult nature of the fictional products being pitched in the cars. There are actually a lot of products for adults. For example, Mac and Lightning McQueen drive past Top Down Truck Stop, an establishment that proudly boasts its convertible waitresses. In the land of cars, it means that the servers can take their tops down meaning they're topless. This is not something that kids would think about when they are just kids, but when you're an adult, you understand it quite fast. Ready for the next one? Have you noticed that Lightning McQueen's primary race sponsor is Rust Easy, a bumper ointment? It's a topical cream for a car's rear end, or the automotive equivalent of Preparation H, a product humans use to treat hemorrhoids. The same thing is about Lightning McQueen's fellow racer and his sponsor. He is funded by Leak Less Adult Dripping Pans, the car's version of adult diapers. Also, there's Toe Cap, a Piston Cup sponsor. They make a device that covers a car's trailer hitch, which could serve as a similar purpose as a condom for cars. So yeah, we can assume there's some sex in Cars movies. Kids won't realize it, but Cars movies is filled with Richard Petty references. Richard King Petty is the all-time winningest racer in NASCAR history, and there's his counterpart in the movie, and Richard actually voices him. Have you guessed who? Right, the king. The King even has the number 43 just like Richard and his car is the most idolized race car in the movie. But not only his, there are a couple of famous on-the-track events from Petty's illustrious career adapted into the action of the movie. For example, The King's horrific spin-out and crash mirror one of the real Petty endured in the 1988 Daytona 500. Also, there is a moment in the movie when Lightning McQueen cuts short his now-assured win to push The King across the finish line. Almost the same thing happened in real life at Daytona in 1976, but it was actually Petty's pit crew that helped him finish the race, not another racer. Is there anything else you would like to mention? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section down below, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Man, a spectacular move by Lightning McQueen. Yeah, good job.